second edition of the Parent Talk. Yeah. Um, I want to say welcome again to everyone for to our second edition of our Parent Talk. Um, I'm Josh, and along with me are Sandra and Esther and Holly. Um, we are staff for Journeys um, Kids and Student Ministries, and we started last month um, doing a parent talk talking about um, motivation and also finding a you know, life balance between the different roles that you're playing, especially while um, we're doing school at home, we're doing work at home, we're doing everything it seems like at home, we're just boundaries and everything just mix and we're tired and no motivation. But we talked about that last time. You can find that um, through uh, our pages, um, Journey Kids and Journey Student uh, Facebook pages. Uh, and tonight, we are talking about spiritual care, um, talking first about how parents are, um, we believe, students' primary spiritual providers, and um, we'll also talk a little bit about um, how parents can care for themselves, um, their own self-care spiritually, uh, emotionally, mentally, all that stuff. Um, so uh, this topic of spiritual care is really important to me as um, I know the rest of the staff here because even though we are um, we are in ministry and we primarily care for students and kids of all ages from like cradle to graduating, um, we see our jobs as not just to care for their spiritual needs, but to also care for parents um, because we see that empowering parents and supporting parents is actually going to be um, the biggest way that we see growth um, and change in students' lives and family lives. And so we care about the whole family, not just the tiny little section that we get to see on Sundays or Wednesday nights or different times throughout the week. So um, to get things started today, uh, I'd just like to share, we actually um, were able to get a few uh, students in on the discussion. And I'm just gonna read a few anonymous uh, responses to um, the idea or the question, um, how can uh, parents be supporting their students' spiritual life? Um, so I'm just going to read a few of them to you guys, uh, and then maybe we can get some reactions from each other and see how it goes. Uh, if you are watching on Facebook, uh, feel free, if you're watching live, to type something in the comments if you have a question. Um, or want to talk more about something, uh, we'd love to interact with you in that way. Um, so let's start with a few of the different uh, responses. I asked uh, several students uh, this question. It was, how can your parents support your spiritual life? Share one thing you love that they do or one thing that you wish uh, they would do. Uh, one student replied with, um, I love uh, when they make time to talk to us about whatever is going on and pray with us afterwards. Another student said, um, I love when they encourage me to talk to God and learn scripture. Um, another student, uh, I really appreciate some of the vulnerability in, in what students shared in this. Um, this student responded by saying, uh, usually I don't listen very deeply to the messages but when I do, I feel the message has been directed towards me. And in some way, I feel the whole message was made for me. And I wish I could tell my parents that without them telling me that it's normal or that everybody feels that because I don't feel that deep connection with the sermon. I don't normally feel that deep connection. So I wish that they would support me more in my spiritual growth instead of rejecting it. Um, and then I have a couple more here. Uh, another student uh, said that they, they, my parents, always tell me to trust God, but I wish that they would push me to read scripture more or have us have conversations about scripture as a family more often. Really appreciated that. Uh, and last couple. Uh, one thing my, my parents did uh, for my spiritual life is that they showed me um, the love of Christ and how to walk in it. Uh, my parents also said that if I ever chose to walk away um, from faith, I would be walking away from, um, I wouldn't be walking away from a set of rules, but I would be walking away from the greatest love story that could ever be found anywhere. Um, but if I ever did and I wanted to come back, I would 
be fully embraced and welcomed in. I love that. Um, and the very last one that I have here is, um, I wish that my parents did not interrupt my quiet time. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, if you heard, if you were able to follow all those, uh, there's lots of different things that are going on there. Some of the needs that we see out of that, I see, um, I see students asking for, um, students asking for more time to talk about difficult things, talk about real things, um, and to pray together. Um, more time uh, in scripture, more supported time in scripture, prioritizing that, um, loving when parents are able to kind of show them the whole story of, of Christ and, and how they, they live into that. So um, maybe just talking about as, as staff members of the church, what are, what are some needs that, um, that, that we see um, students have spiritually um, or some of the needs that, that we might even feel that our own kids have? Maybe we could share that a little bit. Just real quick, I just want to go back to those answers for the high, uh, the student. Yeah. The one thing that really stuck out, which I thought was really cool, was the one person that said that they wish the parents would push them to read scripture. Like, I, I'm thinking that kids are like, stop pushing me to do stuff. And I thought that was really, really cool. And that's the sign of so you're doing something right, you know, as a parent that, you know, they're experiencing the Holy Spirit. They're experiencing God because they want to know more about him. I like that. And then the last one about the the greatest story, the, the, the greatest love story ever told. I thought that was that's really neat. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's like, definitely definitely encouraging. No, 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 that was good. Any anything else that stuck out to you guys there? I just loved hearing from the students. I think it's super helpful when we're talking about helping our students to hear from them, to have honest conversations with them where they feel safe to say, hey, this is what I'm feeling, what I'm needing. And um, I think, I love that we were able to get a few of those from the students. So thank you for that. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, when we When we do, when we are asking, we need to be asking with us with that in mind. Um, I'm just curious for parents who are listening in, and maybe you are thinking different different things. Like, wait, I'm supposed to be the one who like does all this stuff for my students. They don't even they don't even like me to do you know other things for them. They barely like my cooking, or you know they they barely like me like helping with the laundry, or maybe that's the only reason why they like me is for doing those things. <laughs> um, but lots of times, uh, like like what Holly mentioned, um, students saying like, I wish that they would push me more. Um, we don't really know until we ask. Um, so maybe that's a piece of homework is for parents to ask students, ask their kids, um, hey, how can I be supporting your spiritual life? What can I be doing? I know that's something that I try to do um, with students and parents as we go away on retreats or summer camp. Um, to have the parents actively involved in how, how their students are growing that weekend um, and hopefully have that conversation afterwards. So um, yeah, there's lots of different ways that we can go with this conversation, but something that, that strikes me um, lots of times in, in this is again, like parents not knowing where to start um, or that I need to start somewhere. Uh, so, you know, the idea that can I do it? Am I supposed to do it? How am I supposed to do it? I'm just gonna say um, for, my own, for my own limited experience of being a parent for seven months, um, I, I know that there's plenty of ways right now that I, I know that I am missing the mark in terms of the consistency of leading spiritually for my family, for my, you know, seven month old daughter. Um, <laughs> but uh, I think it, I think it starts with being real and, and how you can do it in real and authentic ways. Um, I think there also has to be some intentionality behind it. Um, and then a whole, a whole, whole, whole lot of grace. Um, so, you know, how do you, how do you start that or where do you go or do you know enough? Um, I don't know if you know enough 
uh, I don't think I know enough, <laughs> but I'm trying to do it. Uh, so yeah, I'm just curious, uh, where do your guys' thoughts? I know um, <coughs> ladies here on staff with me have been parents a lot longer, um, but you know, wh what do you guys feel like in terms of that? Do you know enough? Um, does anybody know enough to lead their students spiritually? Yeah, I, sh I sure don't think I know enough. <laughs> I th That's sort of a joke and sort of serious because I think we all can know more. And when it comes to our kids in our life, those are the people that we're focused on right now. Like if you're, we're, if you're married, you're focused on your spouse. But right now, as you're raising your kids, your focus really tends to circle around your kids at this time. And so anything that's not perfect it feels like it's not enough sometimes and so I know I have to encourage myself that just because I can't be perfect doesn't mean I shouldn't share what I do know and mm -hmm. then also parents I'm, I'm reminding myself of this more than anybody else I'm sure is that we don't need to shoot for perfection because it's completely unattainable we can't do that and when we do that we're saying to our kids, we expect that from you and we're gonna lead them down this road that they can only fail at and they can only feel disappointed in. So for me and, and maybe some other parents out there need that, we don't have to be perfect and trying to be perfect can be harmful. Hmm. Yeah, curious to anyone who's watching if you've uh, ever felt like you needed to be perfect as a parent or, have felt like you've made your students feel like they need to be perfect. I know that that's something, I'm a perfectionist type person. I know Sandra said that she's a perfectionist <laughs> or gets told that. Um, I feel like we, we see that a lot around us, um, even with social media and all that. But um, I think that's a good word, Esther, that, that we don't need to be perfect and set those, those crazy limitations, but to still do our best. Yeah. Um, that actually still... me, um, something Sandra taught me when I first came on staff with her is that our kids, <clears throat> Sandra and I teach first grade through fifth grade and our kids ask a lot of questions and they ask really, really good questions. And it's okay in the moment if they ask a question that you do not have the answer to say, I don't really know. Let's look into that together. She taught me that and that has like cause my anxiety to go way down when those questions come up not just at work but with my own family that I can say you know what I don't really know let's let's look into that together and figure that out together okay I love that because it like it gives you it reminds us that I'm not the answer giver right with my kids at work wherever I am I'm not the one nor do I want to be the one that has all the answers. It's impossible. Um, and so I've, I've always focused on that with my kids and um, with the kids at church, because I want them to know that I don't, maybe I don't have all the questions. That's okay, but God does, right? And we can look to his word. We can ask other believers around us and um, we can figure this out together. Mm -hmm. That's really good. I, that's interesting though. Um, it, it's a little bit of a shift in mentality um, when we, we live in kind of an expert culture. You feel like you need to be an expert or authority on something to talk about it. Yeah. Um, but doing life together with your kids, like that feels foreign. That feels different. Like I'm supposed to be the one who has it all together and knows where we're going and everything. Um, but, but to say... Yeah, to say that we're doing this together, that sounds like a cool adventure. <laughs> yeah. But different. I mean, what if what if we were learning just as much um, about ourselves and about parenting and about God as um, our kids were learning about being kids um, and learning about God and how to be in a family together? Yeah. Um, be teaching and learning at the same time. Um, on, on that note, we're going to talk about some resources a little bit later, but um, there's a resource um, from a ministry that I follow called Fuller Youth Institute, and they have a book called Growing With. Um, it talks about how parents can grow with their students. Um, they have just as much growing to do as students are doing, and students are growing now 
even past 18 years old and being in the home and, and household a lot more to, um, you know, mid twenties, maybe even late twenties, um, early thirties. And you're really always a parent. Um, even as kids exit the household, I know I've had my parents being my parent this weekend is, um, I'm working on a, a house that we just bought and, you know, I need my parents now more than ever. It feels like lots of times. Uh, so I appreciate that so much. Um, so just continuing the conversation and providing for um, our kids spiritually, uh, this, this topic, it comes from, it comes from the Bible. It's not something that we made up or that just sounds catchy or, or whatever, but it comes from the Shema and it comes from uh, Deuteronomy chapter six. Um, let me, let me just read this for, for us. Um, Deuteronomy chapter six, starting in verse four. This is something that is called the Shema, which means, um, it, it means to hear. It was like the call that was said. It was almost like a mantra sort of thing for Israel. Um, it starts like this. It says, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. And this is where it really comes into student ministry and kids ministry in verse seven. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you, and when you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you get up, tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them to your foreheads, write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. Nice. It's a really beautiful picture of what, um, what life might look like um, in a society where um, God is the focus and the center um, in a family where God is the focus and the center. So a um, few reactions or, or thoughts or ideas around that, around the whole idea of talking about God when you are um, on the road or when you get up or you lie down or on the door frames. Um, what do you guys think about that? Is that possible? Is that, is that doable? Is it? <laughs> yeah, it's totally possible. I think it's kind of, this is kind of a silly example, but I really don't like going over bridges. Like I have this fear of heights and, um, but my girls love going to the city. So when we go over the bridge, I'm praying, <laughs> Brittany's praying for me <laughs> and I'm gripping the wheel. <laughs> but so things like that, like when we're afraid, it's okay to say, Lord, help me in this moment. Like, I don't know what's happening. Um, I know you're stronger than this fear um and being okay with like that shows vulnerability right it, it i have to be okay showing my my weaknesses to my kids and i have to be okay showing my vulnerabilities to them but it reminds them that when they're going through something that they don't particularly like that it's okay god's going to carry us through it and it doesn't stop us from doing the things that we like because god's going to be with us so it's a silly example but that's one, one of the ways <laughs> I think it's entirely possible, right? But it does take practice. And it's something that you talked about intentionality earlier, Josh. You do have to be super intentional about it. We go through our day and we see, if we're looking, we see how many spaces God has blessed us in, whether it be he's provided for us a meal this day, or he's provided us to go on a trip. He's, you know, he's provided for us or he's cared for us in some way but you have to be willing to look for it and then seek out, seek out opportunities to talk about it with your kids. Mm -hmm. Like, where do you think all of this comes from? <laughs> you know, cause kids, they, I don't know if any of your kids are like this. Maybe it's just mine. Sorry if I'm outing my kids. They want more, like I'm an adult. I want more, Yes. <laughs> but they want more. But do we take the time to be thankful for what we have? And if we intentionally continually say, Hey, what did God give us that we can use to meet this need in this situation without going out and getting more and just pointing to little ways that God has either taken care of us, answered a prayer. I think that's the hard one for me that I'm really trying to initiate is when we pray for something, when the answer comes, circle back and talk about how God answered that prayer. Because a lot of times we just keep moving on 
And although he answered that prayer, we just think, oh, things worked out, but things didn't just work out, right? God worked it out. So just as parents, we really have to be the engine that runs that and continues to make it a constant. Because it's hard to remember, life does get busy. Yeah, definitely, life gets busy. Um, no, I think that being able to intentionally just walk it out and and show them those little those little places is really important. Um, I'm curious, just as a practical as a practical way, um, I'll give you an example first. Um, maybe some people are watching. Maybe you can share too in the chat. Um, what's a practical way that you might be able to do this? But just bringing God or bringing Jesus, bringing our faith into some daily things that we're doing. Like Sandra said, you know, I'm driving across the bridge or um, an example that I think of is, you know, when I uh, take Carmen, um, my seven month old daughter out on a walk and I'm either she's in a stroller, I'm holding her and we're looking at the trees and the leaves. And what's so amazing is just how in awe she is as she looks at these things. And I just remind her, I say, you know, it's so beautiful. Like we're so we're so grateful for God's creation, right? And we say, thank you, Jesus. Like, um, we, we love how green it is and, and how, how we can see the, the effects of the wind. And we just kind of talk through it. And even though I don't know if she fully understands everything I'm saying, but for her to hear um, just as we're walking, as we're walking around to hear um, the love of God that, that he has for us and where we're at. That's one way that I try to um, bring that daily into into our lives. But anything I like else? that example because you're training yourself as well as your daughter, right? Yeah. We're training ourselves through this process too. Yeah. Yeah. So um, if there's any questions, uh, feel free to add them in, in into the chat or anything else that you guys want to add on this before we. Um, we move on to the second half of our discussion for today. One other thing, it's not um, a daily thing, but when, you know, when something happens that blesses us, say we get a check in the mail that I wasn't expecting, or, you know, somebody drops some vegetables or fruits off on my front porch, you know, I always remind the kids like we're walking in favor, like that's the Lord blessing us um, rather than just kind of dismissing it like, oh yeah, we got some fruits and veggies today or oh yeah, we have a little spending cash. Um, just reminding them that, and not only them, but for myself to be thankful for the things that we do have and the ways that God does bless us. Um, so just being mindful, like every little thing that can point to God, point it to God and, and thank him for it. Mm -hmm. That's good. It's so amazing just talking about this and just being reminded of that because we want to think that reading, doing a devotional, make sure you read your devotional, make sure you, you know, do this to that. And it's like, when you're taught, when you're, you know, Sandra and we all, you guys are talking about that, how you just intentionally make a gift from somebody or, you know, just in awe of the nature of God. It's, it's crazy how you can, there's so many different ways, you know, that you can incorporate God into you know, your kids' lives into your own life. And yeah, I, for so long and still sometimes I feel like, oh, my kids, you know, they need to be reading the Bible and this and that, you know, and I had said, I was, when we were all talking earlier, I was just talking about when the kids were younger, we started praying all together at night and we'd say what we're thankful for. And as I got older, the girls had different bedtimes. Now that they're a little older. Um, and so we didn't pray as much. And I still pray with my youngest, Randall, but um, then I was kind of feeling bad about that. But, you know, one night I went in to see why Cameron's light was on and her eyes were closed and she's like, oh, I'm, I'm praying real quick. And that just made me feel good that the Holy Spirit was speaking to her because, you know, the, the experience that we, we did and, you know, yeah. Yeah. So that was a small thing that, you know, I really think that in, impacted her. Yeah, that is a great, um, that's just a great example of like the intentionality and when you are doing these things along the way in their lives, how it does stick with them. Um, and, it, and it is important, um, even though there might be those times 
where it's like, ah, do we have to pray again together? Like, I just want to go to sleep or, you know, I want to do this instead. And, um, but then, you know, like we mentioned in what the students said earlier, one of the students who we got feedback from said, I wish my parents um, challenged us more, like challenged us to read scripture more, challenged us to have these conversations more with together. Um, I think there is a hunger that's there um, that, in many ways, only parents can provide for and can supply. Uh, that's the unique position that I believe that God uh, grants us and blesses us with um, to have that responsibility to speak in into the lives of our students, um, be part of that growth process. So, even uh, though we love this season right now, we're really in a great season where we're doing church together as a whole family. What we're trying to do in my household is pick out one or two things that were said in the sermon, whether it was journey or you're watching another sermon during the week, pick out a couple of things and, and ask questions at the end. You'll be surprised. I'm surprised anyway, the responses that you'll get. And sometimes you'll get, I don't know, and that's what <laughs> they do. but it, it develops a thought process that you're actually processing through some thoughts together. So we've got opportunities, guys. Let's take advantage. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, there's no, no perfection. Uh, yeah. We're unqualified for it. We, <laughs> um, and so, so much of the, like, have I made it questions? They just don't get answered. Um, but we, we have to trust that just like um, we trust that our relationship with God, that he is our father. We are his kids. Um who are in need of great grace and a long process of change and transformation. Um, we, we need to see that our kids and our students need that just as much uh, as we do. Um, so it uh, looks like we lost Esther off the call. Hopefully she can get back um, while we're waiting for her to get back. I just wanna share that on online on our website, um, journeycc.net slash parent resources. We do have some resources um, available for you guys. Um, there are um, some, some book recommendations uh, as well as some podcasts, different ministries that we follow um, and we think a lot about. Um, uh, for some of those that maybe you even just want to jot some down, some that are important to us. Um, Orange is the name of a ministry um, that we work a lot with, um, they, they provide curriculum. I think we use in our, in our um, younger um, EC, is that right, Holly, with early child care, um, or early childhood, excuse me. And um, they have a great, great message of supporting family or, or parents and church supporting kids together. Um, Faithful Families is the name of a book that talks about um, how do you make, uh, how do you make uh, everyday moments or different traditions throughout your year spiritual practices for your family um and there's a bunch of other stuff that you can find there too on our website so just want to point you to that there's podcasts to listen to lots of different ways that you can grow um, and be encouraged along the journey so and i know as staff um, if anyone wants to talk about any of those things we would love love to have the opportunity to chat over a phone call or um over a cup of coffee whatever that is, um, we would love to get together with you. So we're going to, we're going to move on into the second portion of our, of our discussion. And that is um, how do I care for my own uh, spiritual, emotional, relational, just everything well-being as a parent? Uh, I think this question comes a lot from the fact that, uh, Hey, uh, parents are people too. And as much as kids or different people aren't sure about that, uh, we're not superheroes. We're not aliens. Uh, we're people too, and we need our own, we need help ourselves. So, um, one of the questions we were thinking about this uh, together as staff was, you know, what what gets you up in the morning? Um, how intentional or on purpose are you doing um, things in your life? So, I'm just going to ask Sandra to share a little bit about. Um, what is, um, how does she kind of approach some of this stuff and, and what's been helpful for her? She's seen that's helpful in the lives of other people. Yeah, so we have a question from Sandy. Sandy, we'll get to your question in just a second. Um, 
So it's all about intentionality, purpose. And so knowing what my purpose is with each day, knowing what my purpose is as a parent and um, being intentional. So I want to say like before, when my kids were younger, before I started going to church, before I got baptized, I was just trying to get by. I was just trying to do my best as long as they were alive and fed at the end of the day, like I was good. <laughs> but um, as I started to learn and grow and really discover like who God is in my life and it helped me to share that with my kids. So what I would say is how do you start your day? How do you, when you first wake up, what are your first thoughts? So um, can you remember to wake up and consciously choose to put your love on? And what that means is I'm going to love others well today. I'm going to love myself and I'm going to love others well. Put your joy on no matter what happens, no matter how many cars cut me off. I'm going to choose to be joyful <laughs> in these moments, right? Um, all those fruits of the spirit that we have access to because of the Holy Spirit within us, like how can we use those better every day so that when I'm teaching my kids about the Holy Spirit and God and these, these amazing things of God, they see it in me every day. And it's not because I'm trying to do that. It's because that's really what gets me through the day. <laughs> um, so yeah, consciously choosing every morning to, to um, use those gifts, right, to share with others and to help yourself. So and, and there are things we have access to. I remember when I would teach, this was a few years ago, probably now, but we, I would have a lot of kids say, oh, I, don't, I just can't do it. I just can't do it. And I'm like, that's not true because God gave you self-control. <laughs> so you can do it. You're choosing not to right now. So yeah, just like being mindful of the things that um, God gave us and God allows us access to. So intentionally waking up, intentionally choosing to um, be joyful, be loving, and um, not worry about the flies bugging, <laughs> buzzing around. <laughs> um, and so that's one thing that helps. And then another thing I'd like to talk about briefly is something that I was taught uh, several years ago. And it's just this idea of, of something being entirely possible. So a lot of times as adults, we tend to, um, you know, we've had life experiences that make us look at something and think, oh, that could never happen, or that's not going to happen for me right? Um, but knowing that God is bigger than what our parameters are, or what we think our parameters are, knowing that we walk by faith, not by sight. So if my kid is walking away, or if I'm having a hard day, knowing that it's entirely possible for God to turn that around, and having faith that he will, and um, not letting the difficulties in our life stop us. So... Hmm. For me, myself, just speaking for myself, I have to start my days intentionally. I have to remember and tell myself, like, you're here to love God and love others. And you, sh you do that by showing these um, things that God gives you, right? The grace, the uh, mercy, the love, the joy, all these things that God gives us. And people see that. And, and not only that, but our kids are influenced by it. So I don't know if that all made a lot of sense, but that's kind of what helps me. <laughs> I think you said something in there that um, I just want to make sure other people caught. Um, when you said, you know, that you wake up in the morning and you need to put on your joy or put on your love. Um, you also talked about grace in that. Um, just as you were recapping, but I think what that means um, and something that maybe a place that we need to start a little bit further is that we do need things um, that as parents, even as adults, that it's okay to say that I need something. Um, if we didn't need something, then Jesus would never have come, um, died for us, rose again and offered his life our behalf to give us the life that we need um, we need things we need things desperately um, and that's I think lots of us feel guilty about that um, but I think um, kind of behind what you're saying in that intentionality is that intentionally care for the needs and 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 look to find what you you know answers to the needs um, that you have that need to be met 
Um, so, so yeah, in terms of, of that, of needs, and I know that for some, some people, it really does feel impossible to get up in the morning, or it feels like I don't have the motivation to keep going. Well, in that moment, maybe you need some grace, or maybe you need some time, or maybe you need some extra help, um, whatever that is, to, to be aware of that. Um, how can you be aware of that as a parent, um, rather than just trying to mask it over or say, you know, I just got to pull myself up by the bootstraps or, you know, I need to, um, just put a, to, you know, put a face on or, or, or cover it up or whatever, and, and then just keep going. But, um, how do we really truly care for ourselves, allow ourselves to be cared for? I think that's probably really difficult though, huh? That's really good, Josh, you reminded me of something else and that's, um, having boundaries. I think a lot of times, you know, for me, it, I don't know if I'm sure this is everyone, but I tend to overextend myself and I tend to say yes a lot when I probably should be saying no a little. Um, but making sure that you're not exhausting yourselves in your day too, knowing that you do have boundaries, you do have limitations. We are human. Um, so to make sure that I don't suffer that my spiritual care doesn't suffer I do need to make sure that I'm not overextending myself and I think as parents that's super hard mm -hmm. super hard so um what are some ways then let's get a little practical um what are some ways that you can make time or or um yeah look to care for for needs that you have what do you guys think? What have you guys done? What's been successful for you or some ideas? So some of the things that I like have planned, I mean, I don't do all these, but what I was just thinking of was starting small, just committing. I find that I can get up five minutes earlier in the morning rather than trying to find um, a time. I mean, I can find times in the day, but I think it's easier for me to just get up five minutes earlier, um, just to do at least do a prayer or a devotional and reflect just five minutes. Um, I think also but look, look at your schedule in the morning and then set an alarm. If you know that, okay, you know, I have this hour time period between lunch and, you know, helping the kids or whatever. Um, set your alarm for some time in between there just to do a few minutes of, of prayer, just even prayer or uh, finding something, the Bible to, to look at. Um, some other things I put is join a Bible study, um, get together with people who can spiritually uplift you. Mm. Um, what I put? I'll evaluate how you spend your time. I know, you know, and do I want to watch that? Do I want to binge watch the, this Netflix show or can I, you know, take out a half hour of one of the shows and, you know, do some um, devotional or something like that. Just kind of evaluating it and seeing it, is there time that I could be spending spiritually rather than just, you know, mindless. Um, and I think one other thing I put was just when you lay your head down to sleep, just I find that I can calm myself and sometimes I fall asleep praying just you know lay down and I'm you know with God talking to him and then you know so those are just some ways that I find that I need to try you know to try and do or that I have done cool yeah lots of different ways to do it lots of different opportunities I think like we mentioned earlier even with providing for kids lots of opportunities um I want to I want to hit some couple questions that I see uh, in the chat. Um, first one, just while we're kind of on the topic of getting up and that sort of thing, you know, how do you how do you get up, or why do you get up, or, or what's it like even when you're struggling to find that joy, um, or, or you're experiencing things like grief or hardship or something like that. Um, you know, what do you guys see that as, or or how do we approach that when? as parents, even though we need things ourselves, but we also realize that we are needed. <laughs> I think just knowing that it looks different for everyone and that some days are harder than others, right? If I, you know, I, I want to have joy in the moment. And I think the, the most practical thing is praying for it, like declaring it over yourself. I choose joy today. 
And if you have to say it a thousand times that day to get through the day, that's okay. Because you just have to remind yourself um, that that is something that God freely gives us. So we just need to ask for it when we need it. And it's okay if it's difficult more day, uh, some days than others. Like I've, I've of course experienced hard times, experienced grief, experienced loss. And as we all have, you know, so some days it is, it is really hard, but God is always there and we're never alone in it. Did anyone else have something to add in that? There's no, you know, I think we all go through hard times and it's healthy to talk it out with a trusted uh, friend or advisor, but also knowing when to stop talking about it. Mm -hmm. Like if I continue to live in my grief constantly and that's all I'm talking about, that's all I'm gonna be focused on. And so giving yourself permission to talk about it and then also giving yourself permission to not talk about it. Doesn't mean you're okay, it doesn't mean you're better, but you can still, and I think we need to, I do, still go on with life, you know? So sometimes just realizing it's time to, and I don't mean permanently stop talking about it, but just don't let it encompass everything all the time. That's my personal thought. Yeah. I think that's, um, that is that, that balance of, you know, how much do I do of what and, and really knowing, but it's a hard line to walk and it needs lots of grace in there along with it. Um, and I try to think too, like what are ways that um, I realize that I, I want to be really careful. Um, and again, I'm new at this parenting thing, but something that I want to be careful about is um, I don't want my daughter to think that I'm the superhero um, or that I'm Jesus or that I'm God or that I'm going to be the one who fixes everything. I, I would love if I could fix everything for her, but there's just times when I'm, I'm not going to be able to, but maybe it's something that I have going on and I can't be there or, you know, I, I'm not in the right state to, to help her at that moment. Um, I just it, it really super practical or like, you know, little baby example is that, you know, when she's cutting her teeth and, and, and dealing with that pain, like there's only so much that I can do. I can walk her around. I can use like some ice or whatever, like, you know, stuff we have around the house or help her with different things. But there's a point to where I, I literally can't do anything more than be there with her. Um, and so that, that has something to do, you know, with her pain, but I think sometimes with our own, we have to realize that we have our own limitations as parents too. Um, and that's okay to have limitations, but I love that idea, Esther, of, um, you said, you know, talking with a friend, knowing who you can go to, um, Holly, I know you mentioned, um, you know, having a, a spiritual friend or companion that you can be with some sort of community, um, I think all those things are super important in terms of caring for our kids as adults. I think lots of times we, um, we, when, once we have kids, we are kind of focused outwards and then we just focus completely internally on our kids and we do need to care for our kids and, and put them first in lots of ways. But, um, I feel like lots of times parents might lose themselves. Um, I know that it's so easy for me to do that, um, just to focus on work and, and <laughs> my baby, um, than my relationship with my wife or friendships, um, Christian community, that sort of thing. And so really trying to practice and bring our whole family into all those different areas. That's a goal for me um, and my wife um, to see how we can bring Carmen into those areas, how we can do things together more. Um, so I'm gonna hit on, I think there's one more question and I, I might have missed it. Um, was there another question there, Sandra, that you saw? Yeah. So it's Sandy, when you when your child once loved going to church but now is refusing to participate, question, what's a good way to gently encourage church participation? Good question. That's a great question. Good timely question. <laughs> um, We're in a time that makes it a little difficult. So I'll just kind of talk to what I did with my kids because there are certain 
ages and stages where kids kind of draw back and it just is a natural thing. Some don't, which is awesome, but some do. Um, when my kids started drawing back, it was probably like between the fifth and sixth grade. And I remember I didn't really make a big fuss about it. I just said in our church, we go to, we go to church on Sundays and that's it. So I didn't push, I, you know, I, I did the Sunday or Wednesday. I, I chose which one made sense for our family, but we did one and it was, there was no questions asked. Um, and it wasn't, they never felt forced in it. They just knew that was what we did as a family. Um, but I know some people like could, that could feel forced in some families. So I think everyone's going to have their own way of handling it and you'll, find what works for you and, and your son. But for me, that was kind of when they started pulling back, I just said, you know, I'm sorry you're feeling this way. I hope, you know, we're going to pray for you to make connections. We're going to pray for you to make friends. We're going to pray for you to have excitement around this. But in our family, we go to church on Sunday. So that's, it's not a debate. Yeah. Um, I think Jeffrey's close to Caleb's age. Um, that's the right Sandy, right, Holly? Yeah. Okay. So I just want to encourage you that even sometimes when our kids don't seem like they're paying attention, and this goes for both Jeffrey, who's almost nine, and for my teenagers, sometimes they'll be in a service or will be at something and they're not focused and I get frustrated. And then I realize later, you know, my oldest has attention deficit problems. So she will draw. But then hours later, she will bring up something out of the service that I was confident she was not listening to. And that is just something that she does, but her ears are still on the word. Jeffrey does the same thing. He'll be playing with a toy. He'll seem disinterested. And then we'll be having some random conversation that week. And he'll say, oh yeah, that's like what Pastor Scott said on Sunday about this. So trying to have a little bit of grace for that too, is that maybe they are listening. They just need something to engage themselves. That's a possibility too. Yeah. And, and just going back to that um, and looking at that Shema that we read in Deuteronomy chapter six, I think it's verses four through eight or four through nine. Um, it doesn't say to go to church in that ironically. Um, but it says to talk about, um, your faith, talk about God, um, while you're on the road, while you walk around, when you lie down at night, um, to write it on the doorpost in your home, um, it's this image that kind of wherever you are is an opportunity to meet God. Um, you know, when you walk into your home, how is your student or how is your kid being reminded, um, about the gospel and that they're loved and the good news of Jesus, um, how when you're driving to school or you're picking kids up from school or going to the grocery store, or going on vacation or eating a meal, how are those opportunities to um, get closer to one another and closer to God in those moments uh, when you're going out and getting the mail? I don't know, whatever, <laughs> whatever you're doing, whenever you're going, um, how can those things be um, part of that rather than it being a one-time event once a week? Um, I would much rather have, you know, 20 moments throughout my week where I was talking and engaging with my, my kids about God than one hour a week where that was the only thing we talked about. We didn't ever talk about the, the rest of the week. Um, yeah. While I work for a church and I believe church is very important, um, <laughs> there, are, there are many, many, many important um, ways and church is just one part of our spiritual journey. Um, and, uh, yeah, so yeah, that's a like great question. That, yeah. I like how that passage really speaks to, we don't stop life to do these things, right? We do things in life, right? Our life exists and we do all these things through life. I don't have to stop and go sit and hear a sermon to do these things, right? I could be going through the shopping, you know, the grocery store I could be dropping my kid off at a friend's house, anything I'm doing, all these things can be included. I like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want to read this if you don't mind, Sandra. The, there's some notes here that I thought it answered that question about, you know, kids are kind of going in the other direction. But 
Um, so when the worries creep in, pray and know that God loves them more than you can even imagine. He is patiently waiting for them to come to an understanding of who he is and how much he loves them. If he can be patient with many, we can be patient with our few. He's patiently waiting for us and for those that are, that are kind of straying. Awesome. All right. Well, um, I think this has been a fun conversation uh, talking about spiritual needs for our students, but also needs for ourselves as parents. Um, I just want to remind everyone that we do have parent resources online uh, at journeycc.net slash parent resources. And uh, if you're looking for anything in particular specific to, you know, your situation or your student situation or age, uh, we have additional resources that we have to um, each of us. I'm just going to make a shout out to Orange and uh, their phases curriculum that they have. Uh, they have books. They have. We actually have um, cards that we um, are planning to be using once we we can meet in person. Um, that talk about the different phases that that kids are in, basically each year of life from birth to 18, uh, and what that looks like. Different ways that we can. Uh, engage with our students um, at all different levels and especially spiritually. So um, I would love to, maybe we can have another conversation about that sometime too. But um, if you guys have any questions or anything else you'd like to talk about, feel free to add it to the chat. Um, we'd love to follow up with you uh, personally on that. But besides that, so grateful um, for you guys joining us and Thanks to the students who anonymously shared uh, with us and just gave us a little bit of insight into their reality um, and their needs and desire to be spiritually cared for by their parents. So um, just thank you so much, everyone, and hopefully see you when we do this again next month in October. So awesome. see um, you guys later. Oh, one more thing. Yeah, so we had... Um, I guess when we post on the three different pages, we get questions on each area. So this is one that came in on the journey students. Okay. Uh, what would you recommend for college age kids who have disconnected? Oh, great question. Um, well, wow, this, this really goes into a lot of different things um, that play into it. But uh, some of the things that are important to realize, one is that yes, uh, your students, uh, college age, they're still your kids. They're always going to be your kids, right? Um, and you're always going to be their parents. And so there is, uh, there is a, an area, a way where, where uh, that is still your, uh, your responsibility to care for your, your kids as, as that age. I don't know the situation. Again, all situations are different. Sometimes they're within your home. Still at that point, sometimes they aren't. Um, and really, uh, I would say that when you're getting into that age, you're dealing with, now you're dealing, you are dealing with adults and we need to understand that too. Um, it's, it's far less of a, you know, you have to listen to me sort of deal. Um, but really realizing that um, every student, every person is on, um, is on a spiritual journey that you have the opportunity to honor and be a part of. Um, or very quickly, um, you can do things that can create isolation or rejection. Um, and so um, kind of approaching it in a way, um, asking, you know, how can I, how can I best support a student in this time? Um, not necessarily uh, making, making mandatory things, I would say with someone who is, who is an adult, but um, you know, what does that look like if they are still living in your house? How do we bring grace and truth um, into the situation? How do you um, create a situation where um, you, can, you can maintain your relationship, um, but also um, kind of like what one of the students said earlier, like, I wish that my parents pushed us more into, you know, growing uh, spiritually together. Um, but I guess if we're talking with someone who has gone away from the faith, uh, the thing that comes back to my mind the most is Luke chapter 15 um, and the story of the prodigal sons um, there or the lost sons, excuse me. There's really two lost sons in the prodigal son story. Um, the one who goes and rejects his father and then 
um, waste all the inheritance and comes back. But then you also have the second son who is equally as lost, even though he was with his father, um, saw his father as a means to an end as well and, and wished that he would have a party himself and, and had no desire to see his brother return. Um, in the end, what we see is that we see a God who um, is equally, equally concerned and caring and desiring for um, his sons to, to be um, with him. Um, to have a relationship with him and for him not to just be a means to the end. So um, any moments or opportunities where you can speak that sort of love, um, that sort of um, acceptance into, li into the life of um, college age students is um, totally um, needed and, and healthy. Um, and again, there's lots of different uh, things that can go into and I can speak a lot more into that at another time. Um, but I would say start starting there and honoring the spiritual journey that they're on. Um, and then, um, you know, seeing how you can speak grace and truth into their, into their lives. So, um, hopefully that, that was helpful, but, um, love to connect more to afterwards. Talk about that. Okay. So, uh, with that, then we will say uh, good night for now, and hopefully we can do see you guys back again uh, in October. So, see you guys. Have a great Bye. night. Thanks Bye. for being here.